technology being scrutineering. Uh, so in today's talk, will be very different uh, because uh, uh, when we talk about admission talk, we talk about our education admission. We want the student can be a polymath because that's the future. You know the world is changing so fast. Right? I, I, I don't even can predict what's the future for the student. I don't feel sorry for your generation. But uh, that's one way for you to, I should not use the term survive. I want, uh, that's one way for you to be, to, to be successful is you always need to learn something new. You always need to equip yourself become polymath. So in today's talk, it's, it's very simple. Right? I, I, you want to be a polymath. I want you to think about outside the box and become a great inventor. So I will give you some example. So I am a civil engineer, but all my research now is using AI for different applications. So I want to let you know, right, even for civil engineering, it's very conventional industrial. We still can use this innovative technology in many different aspects. Okay, so it's just that hopefully I can inspire you when you come to, no, doesn't mean you need to come to USD, but remember, AI is everywhere. It's like a tour for everyone. Doesn't really mean you need to study CS, and then you need only, only CS people need to use AI. Even though you study literature, even though you study arts, you definitely need to know AI. So should I start or wait for them? Yep, okay. So uh, this is me. Uh, I particularly put the title IR there. Okay, it's not for show off. I will tell you what is IR later. Okay, but before I talk about AI, I want you to think about it. Why you come here today? Why you want to go to university and spend four years, even longer there? Why? What is exactly your purpose? Okay, so enter university just like you enter a treasure island. This is a treasure island for you. I hope if you come to HKSD, you can spend your effort to find out your true treasure, your passion. Okay, that's a different way for you to find your passion. But very important thing is don't follow the crowd. You need to know your uniqueness. And then you will know what's the best for yourself. It's not easy. Even though I'm, I'm old enough, but I still don't know what I want sometimes. I think it's a lifelong searching. But start earlier, as early as you can. Then your life will become different. OK, know your uniqueness. OK, so let me start from this one. Uh, this was published in June this year by the World Economic Forum. You can look at a great invention there. Right? The second one, generative AI, that everyone knows, ChatGPT. But you also can look at others. The world is not only AI, okay? We have many things relevant to engineering. So remember, although today's focus, I want to talk about AI, but you should know what is your true passion. Maybe in ECE, maybe in civil, maybe in other disciplines. And then using AI as the emerging technology, using AI to help you think outside the box. Okay. Since Ava talked about ChatGPT, let's make a very cute experiment. Starting with the ChatGPT and have some thought about the result. So when I prepared this talk, I said, hey, ChatGPT, can you make a CV for me that I can tell the audience? The church will say, no, they cannot. That's great. They concern data privacy. Oh, that's not bad. And then continue. So I say, OK, I still want to introduce myself. That would be cool, right? It's church GPT, not myself. I say, who is the professor using one HKST? The answer, he is an economist and a professor at the School of Business. No, I'm school engineering. I thought, oh, what happened? OK, maybe I should choose, choose my last name, WNG, first. OK, so I s just swap. OK, who is the professor, WNG, YH, C? Oh, I apologize for the confusion in my previous response. 
okay, he still didn't get it. So the immediate thought is, I'm not famous. You can change it. You can <laughs> but they think twice. Do we really expect ChatGPT to give us 100% accuracy? And then if AI make a mistake, who is going to take responsibility? Can we put AI into the jail? I think it's a big issue. But to be honest, I think we are not ready. AI coming so fast, even for the educator, we are not ready for that. So there's a lot of issue we need to uh, find a solution. But anyway, do you need to really expect it gave you 100% accuracy? So every time everyone talk about ChatGPT, it's, oh, it's not accurate. But we are engineer. We know what kind of tool we are using. When you ride a bike, you don't expect bike can be faster than the car. You should know the limitation of your tool, and then you use it. OK, we are human beings, right? Give me one this is from 0 to 50% is enough. I'm human beings. I still have another capability to make another 50%. So know the tool, know the capability. We don't need to wait until it's 100% accurate. It's very difficult to achieve, indeed. But anyway, that's certainly it's a general comment, right? It doesn't work for a special case. For example, you want to put someone in jail, right? No mistake. Zero tolerance. OK, then what is the IR? A lot of people cannot pronounce what is IR. This is a special title given by HKIE after you become a professional engineer. So we pronounce engineer, but the IR is from Latin. Okay? But the pronunciation is engineer. See how prestigious this title. They want me to put even in front of professor. So I'm IR first. What's the meaning of IR? There's two meanings. First, to contrive, to define, to create something. Second, cleverness. So I want to change your mindset about being an engineer. We are not computer geek. We are creative. We are clever. So we should be the leader of the society. OK, so starting from today, we are not computer geek. We should be the leader for the future. In my previous talk, we say we use emerging technology X. We are well trained to solve the problem. OK, I give you this page and then tell you they all are a polymath. And now I give you another list. You look at this list, you should know of them, right? Isaac Newton, Maxwell. You know who is Maxwell? It's on the coffee. OK, Maxwell is electromagnetism, right? The third one, Faraday, and the volume, PV equal to NRT. William Thompson, the low Kelvin after temperature, the last one, Thomas Young. So once again, there's one thing in common among those people. Guess what? They are not only the great physicists at that time. They all are a polymath. And believe it or not, they all are Christians. OK, anyway, they are polymaths. So you think outside the box. I don't have time to give you an example in the previous talk. Now I want to give you some example. The first one is a very famous one, how to think outside the box. We call it reverse thinking. So you look at this photo, this picture, right? So during the World War II, they do the statistics to count the bullet point. OK, so whenever where has more sh shot by the gun, so they want to strengthen those parts. But indeed, it's totally wrong, right? Those airplanes can make it and come back. They should strengthen those parts hasn't been shot. Because for those airplanes has been shot on a particular part, they didn't come back. So this is very famous about the reverse thinking. The next example is Thomas Young, very famous in civil engineering because of young theory, uh, young modulus. Okay? So you look at what he has done. He is a wave theory of light. And he studied the Young's modulus, very famous, very important for civil engineering. 
region and the current theory glasses. Okay? Young Laplace equation, you talk about the two particles has a meniscus. What is the equation to quantify it? And the medicine, for eight out, take one pill. How about feet? Two, one third, or a uh, quarter, etc. Okay, and then language. The most famous one is Egyptian hieroglyph. You should know the Rosetta Stone. Who solved the mystery? It's him. And he also is a musician. You do the tuning from C to D. What's the frequency you to use? He proposed different theory for temperament. He also an actor Britannica. He is just a one man team. It's not a lot, but you look at He has done so many things. Because of this, he is able to solve different questions, different problems, using the knowledge from different fields. Okay, this is a very famous case by Elon Musk. He said, you civil engineer, me, geotechnical engineer, not good. You didn't do a good job to build the tunnel. You won't do it. I was very surprised. Because for me, I'm traditionally trained civil engineer. I have a historical overburden. Okay, found my teacher, found my teacher's teacher, teach me how to design a tunnel. But for Elon Musk, no. Everything can start from something new, totally different. It's just like a sci-fi movie, right? It's a trail to transport the Tesla. It's not for the car to run through the tunnel. So the economic, I mean, the tunnel size can be very economical. It costs less, and it can build very fast. So it's another good example. If you don't have a traditional overburden, the knowledge, you can think outside the box. Another one, Thomas Edison. People say he never sleep, but no. Okay, I always encourage my students to read this book, Why We Sleep, recommend by Bill Gates. Think about it. You spend one third of your life on the bed. Do you really understand why you need to sleep? Okay, talk about the case for, Tom, uh, for Thomas Young, the Edison. Okay. He's a great inventor, right? He has so many crazy ideas. So what he did is, when you go to IEM, basically your body is paralyzed because your brain is functioning like you are awake. But they want to protect you, so make you paralyzed. You are not going to hurt yourself. I think you have some experience, right? Sometimes you feel you wake up, someone on the top of you will think it's a ghost. No. It is because the transition doesn't work very well. Okay? So when you go to IEM, basically it's a dreaming time. When you are dreaming, it's just like a neural network. It's just like a deep learning. He tried to combine all kinds of possible connection. And then he has a ball on his hand. After he go to IEM, paralyze, and then drop the ball on the pen in the button, you wake up. That's a great idea. So next time, if you cannot solve the math equation, go to the bed. If you cannot play piano very well, go to the bed. If you cannot do something very well, go to the bed. But if you didn't study at all, don't do it. There's no major. <laughs> OK, so we know engineering and AI is everywhere. So for the following, I will give you a few examples. As a civil engineer, how do we use the AI? But I need to give you a background. Let's start from definition. This is from Cambridge Dictionary. What is AI? It is a quality that a human mind has. So basically, you can do something like a human beings. We use different terms. People think AI. But do it right. Machine learning is a subset of AI. AI is big on brother. Deep learning is another subset of machine learning, and then generative AI, and then GPT, etc. So when we talk about AI, just a very broad term. This is a history of development. I want to point out two. The first one is, uh, wait, okay, this one, Adam Turing. Have you watched the movie, Imitation Game? So he developed this computer and they dissolved the decode, the Nazi code, right? Okay, you, you should get the life, watch the movie. Okay, so he, make a, he asked a very profound question. Can machine think? Okay, the second one, I want to talk about deep learning from Professor Jeffrey Hinton. 
the developed learning in 2006, and then become very famous in 2016, when AlphaGo beat the human beings. Indeed, the record should be 2015, but the most famous one is a Korean chess player, 2016. After that, Siva was number one, but this again changing. Everyone want to study CS now. Nobody want to study CS. <laughs> Just kidding, still have a lot. But the US, everyone now in this classroom, I think 90% of you may want to study CS because of this, okay? And then 2018, the Nobel Prize in the computing world, the Turing Award from Alan Turing, gave the three pioneers of deep learning, Yami Kong, Jeffrey Hinton, Joshua Bengio, okay? We want to talk about two stories. First one, Yami Kong, he just sell his company. Okay, for Jeffrey Hinton, he resigned from Google. It's big news. Let's look at what he did. Okay, when I was a student, I need to know how to do programming. But now it's different. The computer is teachable and also learnable. Okay, traditionally, we can use like a supervised learning, just like you teach your kids. Okay, this is the apple, this is a banana, one by one. Okay, and you need to teach enough apple, teach enough different kinds of banana. The second one we call unsupervised learning, Basically, we let the machine to cluster similar things together. You can see it group banana together, group apple together, although the machine doesn't know what is that. But they just based on the feature, the same. Then we tell the machine, oh, this group is banana, this group is apple. The other one we call reinforced learning, like alpha goal. We give them a particular goal to achieve, okay? So, Remember, this is a traditional way we do the AI. Okay, I will tell you the new way, new way later. So how can we use AI and think outside the box and do different kind of application for civil and environmental engineering? Basically, we use AI to help us process data in the time domain, time frequency domain, in the 2D image, also in the 3D point cloud. Okay, so let's start from the first case. This is the job, uh, the project with the uh, Hong Kong Geotechnical Engineer Office, GEO. So they take an uh, area photo or satellite image, and then AI can generate the landslide inventory. So we call this landslide inventory automatically. Okay, so you can look here, the seashore, shop, the seashore site, the number two here. Okay, you look at the color here, it's very similar to Lensat scar, but deep learning model will not make a mistake. Very powerful. Okay, so we can use Lento Island as one example. So we take an area photo or a satellite image. We can ask the model to recognize where are the buildings, okay, and where are the landslide, and then we can impose the digital terrain data, the height. So we can know, okay, if this landslide very close to the building, this might be a dangerous landslide historically. Okay, so we can expand this calculation to the entire Lento Island. This is just in the dial village. Okay, we extend to the entire Lento Island. So we can ask the model to see, okay, where are the road, the building and the road, and also the landslide scar. So everything can be done, maybe 20 minutes. In the past, human need to use month, okay? But we still want human participate. We don't want the black box. So we can ask the model to generate uncertainty where the model cannot predict well, and let the human expert look at and the teacher model again. So we can use this method, uncertain based method to do different kind of learning. You can hear this a different term, active learning, continuous learning, federated learning. This is many, 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 okay? But the, the purpose is the same. How can we keep the accuracy of AI model? Didn't change with time. Do you know the AI model accuracy after you deploy it on the side, on the field, it will continue to decrease because he received more and more image of the information. The model well confused. Greater. Okay, in any way. So, the idea is now we can burn 
uh, AI chips and they put it on the UAV. And then whenever it's necessary, we just fly the UAV out and then process data. Oh, there's a landslide there, there's a disaster there, etc. cetera. Also, they use the AI to help us predict is a river na network. Okay, how the river flow through the mountain, flow through the uh, flat area, etc. Okay, so this is uh, the student design this backpack. So we have LiDAR, we have a 360 degree camera. You can carry it and then walk through. It's a building. Uh, it's a, uh, I don't need to mention where. Okay, this is a building from the government. And then we can check the structure, uh, do the structure inspection. So now we want to put this mobile mapping system on a robot dog. So we can work from home and ask a dog to go to the site to do the investigation. But in any way, LIDAR gives us absolute measurement. Image is not. So we need to combine these two measurements together. They were able to know the size. We are able to know the location in a very precise way. Then we want to use AI to help us process data. I want to use this one as a particular example. How can we think outside the box? It's really a reverse thinking. Indeed, most of the data we get is normal data. right? It's not a defect, the defect data. So we just train the model to learn the normal condition automatically using autoencoder. So you can learn what is normal. And then whenever we give the data with a defect, it will confuse. It cannot generate the figure very well. So it will create error. So from this particular error map, it is exactly the same as just like we take an x-ray on the defect. The left hand, the right hand side is a 2D image. Left hand side is generated by AI. We didn't do anything. The AI generated this. This is a crack, this is for sporting. So it's beautiful, right? Very, very powerful. Okay, we also can put a camera on the street. We monitor each vehicle. Each vehicle, it is a pollutant source. Double data bus, taxi, then we can calculate for the street pollution. We also can do the traffic monitoring, etc. But now, if you put a camera on the street, wow, people will ask you, what are you doing? What is my privacy? So we cannot do it. We start to use LiDAR. You can look at LiDAR. OK, there's several benefits to using LiDAR. You still can see it's a human, but you don't know the detail. And LiDAR gives you 3D measurement, absolute dimension. So you can calculate the speed. You can calculate the acceleration, deacceleration. Indeed, what we want is acceleration and deacceleration. Because think about when the car, the vehicle, will emit those pollutant source, when it starts to accelerate. Okay. So anyway, when you go home today, pay attention. There's a uh, security guard house in the north gate, also in the south gate. On the rooftop, we put our light up in. Take a look. So we can monitor the car coming to the university. So we have a UAV, take an image, take a video, and then the left-hand side is the LiDAR. We still can, using the LiDAR image, to distinguish one kind of vehicle. Okay. This is a very interesting project. Guess what? What is that? Those lines. We put several LiDAR in the train station. Those are the passenger walking along the train station. So. We can get the working speed. So for Hong Kong people always rush to work. So in the morning, the working speed is fast. Okay? But the purpose is more than that. We can monitor the passenger's behavior. So I'll give you an example. So you can see he have a trolley, or not part of the baby trolley. So he has a sign, okay, directed to a certain direction, although he didn't follow the direction. The other one has a big luggage. You can see the sign. Oh, he know he's a big luggage. Once again, he didn't follow the sign. But anyway, we can do more. We can predict the AI. We call it a behavioral AI. Okay. So this beautiful one. What is that? We put the lidar in front of Ding Ding. 
So we can use LiDAR to detect any intrusion, any object on the railroad, okay? And then if something on the rail track, okay, we should stop the car and then prevent any accident. Okay, we also can do the bird watching using AI. So this is a project with DSD. Uh, so you can see, this is not the father and son. This is a little egret, this is a gray egret. They're almost identical. Can AI distinguish them? The answer is yes. So this uh, near the Chenmen uh, the Sardin sewage uh, pipeline treatment plant. So you can look at yellow one is a gray egret. The green one is a little egret. So basically, the AI didn't judge by size. It judged by features. If you tour around the campus, okay, you can find that we put a camera in the campus. I also monitor the bird in the campus. You can follow my Instagram. <laughs> we have the 76 different species. Okay, the point I want to make, we have this sustainable smart campus as a living lab. So not only faculty, also students, if you have a great idea you want to try, you apply funding from there, you can use university as a big living lab for you to try any good idea. We have a lot of accidents due to the tree fall down. We also a project with TMO, with a jockey club. So we put a tree sensor on the tree, and then we monitor the tilting. But it's a huge amount of data. We're using AI to help us identical anomaly and then predict, oh, the tree is going to fall down. You also can see this black box in the campus. Also, under this project, OK, you can take a look. We have like around 50 sensors in the campus. Okay, come to generative AI. It's really changed our life. Everything we did in the past, use a traditional way, we probably need to redo it again, use in a totally different way. Let me give you an example. When the ChatGPT come to the market, it's November 2022, less than one year, and you know your life is totally changed by the chatbot, okay? I just finished my proposal, free proposal within a month. It can never be done in the past. So I totally feel that's really my career. <laughs> I watch the YouTube to learn a lot of things. I use ChatGPT to publish my writing and then search a lot of things. I use Google to check the fact and then copy and paste. <laughs> I exaggerate a little bit, but it's really change our life. It's changing everything. Okay? So that's one big problem. If you use ChatGPT, we always wonder the accuracy. So people know that. But think about right everything has a process. The chat GPT, you look at the, the, the deep learning 2016. Now 2023. Just six or seven years. It changed the world totally. Wow, the change speed is really out of our expectation. But we don't satisfy by that. We still want to make it very, very accurate. You can look at the right hand side, we call specialist AI. We have a different way to improve the accuracy. Okay? So the ultimate goal is very simple. We want to use become the uh, artificial general general intelligence, AGI. So that's our ultimate goal. You can know, the AI know everything. I hope that day will not come because I think I will lose my job. They don't need teacher anymore. <laughs> okay, so let's look at new development. This is from uh, Facebook. So they call Sigma anything, same. So in the past, I need to teach, right? This is a jacket, okay, Sigma out. No, now you don't. They have a very big model that you just click and it will take them out immediately. So this is called Lisa. We call reasoning segmentation. You can write something, say, okay, the crack is dangerous. Can you segment it out? And also make some comment. You will do it. Wow, I don't need to do the labeling anymore. The model can automatically do it by itself. Let's look at more. This is a large, large language model and vision. Now we call multi-model large language model. 
I can give your model a picture. Okay, this is on the bridge. You can see the defect there. So I say, hey, can you do analysis as a structural engineer? Then da -da -da -da, many things. He said, okay, based on visual inspection is what what. Based on the structural analysis is what what. Based on the environmental assessment, based on traffic analysis, on and on and on and on. And, on. and eventually he said, okay, from zero to 10, what's the score? Seven, eight, quite dangerous. Wow, that's my job. Okay, I give you another one. So we can give this photo, it's a car accident. You can do analysis, okay? So even something unusual, this is a cyclone, you have a car, you do, oh, car come to the driving lane and create some traffic, okay? And then this is the one I took right after typhoon. Okay, I just passed to the model, and the model do analysis. You can look here. The model know it is, has a risk on the surrounding area, including the nearby park bench. So he know there's a park bench there. Then there's a trail there. I don't need to teach the model. Model is already pre-trained. And he said, okay, we need to put a sign for the precaution. So it's better than university. The university did that. Okay. But uh, you already put the tree back, okay? But you didn't put the any sign. Another accident, you should know this news, right? In uh, last year, September 16th, this uh, Feng Huang Mu just collapsed on the school bus, okay? So I will give you another example. How is it going to change your life? You can look at here. I say, okay, write the news. I'm a government official, right? I need to write the news. Write the news as a professional algorithm. As you can see, he write down very well and very accurate. He didn't even see the rule. He know it's uprooting. He failed more, also very accurate. He know it. Okay, so I'm a government official. Originally, I need to write news within half hour. No, not one minute. Done. My job is finished. Okay, let's be picky on the model. Say, okay, one reporter asked, there's no rain, no wind. Why the tree fall down? Right? If you read the news, they just finished inspection. Okay? So what is your answer? So let's do two things. First, I can ask the model to answer in a bureaucratic way. You look at how the model answer. So I, in this particular case, the tree may have had a structural weakness or other underlying issue that were not detected during the previous inspection. Wow, so good, right? You read something, but you don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> right, that's what we want. So sometimes now I write an email, I don't want to offend people, I just say, hey, modify as a very bureaucratic way and send it out. Okay, it changed my life as well. But let's challenge the model more. Okay, we don't want to play this game. We want it to be very professional. What is the answer from professional arborists? You can look at the model. Say, in this particular case, the tree may have been weakened by underlying issues such as root damage. Yeah. Or pest inf infect in infestation that were not detected during the previous inspection. Yeah, that's exactly the answer. So, now you know how you change your life. And it generate a new job we call prompting engineering. How to prompt the model is really an art. How you prompt the model to give you the answer you want. So, Professor Jeffrey Hinton, right, he got a Turing Award, we call the Fall of Deep Learning. It's a really big news in June. This is from the time, New York Times. He quit the consultant uh, job from the Google because he worried about three things. First, accuracy. We know, right? Chat GPT has an illusion. And the second, he talked about he worry about the changing of job market. It's really true. When I started to do the deep, uh, AI application many years ago, 
people ask me, oh, it's going to take our job. I said, no, 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 it's not so soon. But now if you ask me again, I will say, yes, you look here, the case I give you. Okay, the third thing is, you worry about people using AI for the wrong purpose, like a military purpose, military purpose, but it's too late. You can see those UAV, right? Give a bomb to, in the Ukraine again, uh, the war, and also now the war in Israel. We don't know how the things is going to develop. What if you ethical using AI? We are really behind it. Right? Things change too fast. It's really out of our control, to be honest. But we cannot stop it. It is there. So in this university, we do encourage students to use it. So for example, this year, I'm teaching a class and say, OK, you can use ChatGPT to help you to write lab report. But you need to cite how you prompt and what's the answer from the model. I want to show this. It's a great experience done by my colleague. He finds two very good students. And the one student is only allowed to use Google. The other one is allowed to use a chatbot. And ask them to design an entire curriculum within 30 minutes. And the course title is called Brazilian Effect. Oh, sorry, Brazilian Nuts Effect. I said, what is that? I didn't even heard what is the Brazilian Nuts Effect. So they showed me the result. Why is from Google? Right. Oh, you can use Google. Why is from, you can use a chatbot. The first one he showed me, wow, beautiful curricular design and a lot of text, well structured. I say, this one must be from ChatGPT, right? Copy, text, copy, text. And the second one, a lot of image, full of creativity. I suddenly realized what we have lost. If you rely on ChatGPT, you lose your imagination. Don't let that happen. ChatGPT is a tool, but we need to use it in the right way. Don't lose your identity as a human being. So I always encourage students to watch this video, YouTube video, the given by So Ken. You just heard Ken Academy, right? So how he used, right, in a totally different way. He knows. AI can be used to enhance HI, human intelligence, human potential, and the human purpose. So if you look at his talk, he will teach students how to solve particular math questions step by step. If you can teach teachers how to teach step by step. Also, you can talk to the author, say, hey, why you write this sentence in your book? So the author will answer you. But the most important thing is he provides Socratic meaning. So here's a one example. Say, I'm an athlete. Why should I learn math? And then you will give a lot of advice. I think it's better than I can do, right? I think the AI now is like a co-pilot. You can you all hear this term many, many times. It will become your personal tutor, become your personal instructor. So let's make the best use of the best part of the generative AI. Of course, everything has two sides, but let's be wise how to use it. You will really change our lifestyle, right? I can finish three proposals in one month. I can play for another few months. Uh, just kidding. Okay, that's more. I just mentioned this, right? We have a robot, and uh, if you go to like that, I just repeat a little bit, right? We have this Tesla, 172 centimeter. Leave piano by one hand, I cannot. The second one is one uh, Boston Dynamics. You can do a backflip, you can watch YouTube. I also cannot. The third one is Google Butter. You can interact with people, say, are you thirsty? Do you want coffee? Do you want a drink? Orange juice, etc." So we are going to work with robot. Maybe now already. You have a robot. Colleague, this Emeka, this is Neo from Matrix, right? This is a from the region company. It's going to work with uh, Open AI. So, if you have a robot become your colleague, what is ethics? Do we need to worry about their emotional problem? 
There are so many, many things coming. But are we ready? No. Anyway, that's your future. You need to work with human, uh, of course we are human, <laughs> also work with robot and AI. But are we ready for that? Get yourself ready. More than that. So we just launched the first satellite, HKSD satellite. So sooner or later, it's not just one on the sky, it will be many on the sky. So let's look at a fantasy in the future. Now people talk about quantum computation. Everything can be done in a picosecond. So you have so many satellites in the sky, and it gives you many, many data. And then you can process within a second, give you a result, make a decision. That's the future. So everything you have seen in the sci-fi movie, you will come true soon. But I don't know how soon. But the question is, are you ready? You come to this university, right? you have a beautiful career, beautiful life waiting for you for the next 40 years. But get yourself ready. Then we should be able to see something that we have seen before, just like a black hole, and make a better decision. And give us better life, make an impact to this society have a high goal to change the entire human being's living world. Okay, thank you very much, and hope to see you. Thank you. you have time to do it? Okay. So do you want, do you want me to ask me a yes. question? Yeah, sure. Uh, I was wondering. Yes, hi. Uh, thank you, Professor Wong. This is a great presentation. Um, Quick question is, uh, can you possibly provide some theory as to why the AI defense system seem to not have picked up the invasion from Gaza? Oh, uh, I, I am not an expert. I just read newspaper. <laughs> so my information is from the same as newspaper, right? They, I think from engineering point of view, when we decide something, everything has a limitation. Just like when we decide, uh, past few weeks ago, we have a flooding in Hong Kong. Right? This is like a 500 year return period. We don't do, do design for night, low opportunity. So for the Gaza, I read from newspaper is that they, they launched like a 5,000 missile at the same time. So they saturate the system, because you don't design your system to intercept 5,000 missiles at the same time. That's why they learn. But I think it, it, it's a very common. Every system has a limitation. No matter how good it is, even though it's AI. AI will fail. So when we publish a paper, do you think we say it's 100% accurate? No. If you say your prediction 100% accuracy, your paper will be rejected immediately because nobody will believe you. It's an overfitting the model. Sometimes 80 something is really good now. So then you still have a 20% failure. So everything can happen in that 20%. It's a fail. You just see the result. But the possibility is big. Yeah, I, I'm not an expert. I just buy, uh, I just read the newspaper. Yeah, said that. OK, anything else? Yeah, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm just around that this uh, satellite has launched uh, from Hong Kong. Yes. Uh, can you uh, explain a little bit about this uh, satellite, the functions? What's the use of it? Mm. Thank you. Yeah, I think. Um, <laughs> okay, don't worry, I'll do it quickly. So basically, if you look at a satellite, that's a different orbit height. So it's not like a traditional high orbit satellite. It is like a middle range. Right? The starting is like a uh, starting is like a uh, low orbit satellite. So for those low orbit satellites, they can give you the information in the real time. And then with a very low cost. Yeah, but the, the issue is, there's a huge air friction. So it cannot last long. Maybe five to six years, it will die. So we are going to have a lot of uh, space garbage soon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No problem.
and then have a great day. So thank you very much for coming to the USD, and the best to see you.